I just found the perfect violin tree. Well, to tell you the truth, I have no idea if that tree is any good. This is the first time I've knocked a tree in the forest. <laughs> so, but is it amazing that only one out of a hundred of these trees can be used for violin making? So right now I'm in the Fiamma Valley in Italy, in the north of Italy, and apparently Stradivarius got his violin wood from this forest. Not this forest right here, but from this valley. But the trees that he used would have been 150 to 250 years old. So most of these trees behind me are way too young. Like those trees are only between 20 and maybe 80, 90 years for the bigger ones. So the trees that I'm really looking for are a lot older. But I came here to the Fiamma Valley just to learn a lot more about the kind of timber that Stradivarius would have used, the kind of forests. But I also found out a couple of sad things that are happening at the moment. So we use European spruce for the top plates of the violin and there's a very specific reason. European spruce grows very straight and it has a very different winter grain to a summer grain. Now do you know what a winter grain and summer grain is? Well it's kind of easy. Uh, winter grain is where the tree has grown in winter and summer grain is where the tree has grown in summer. And in summer it's a lot warmer so a lot more nutrients get to the tree so it actually grows quite fast. Whereas in winter quite often the ground is frozen and, uh, and the tree grows just a tiny bit. But the timber that it grows in winter is really hard. And that's what makes spruce perfect for violin top plates. And the reason behind it is that the winter grain, uh, being that hard, it provides a, um, a, a structure to support the instrument lengthwise. So from the top to the bottom, the instrument doesn't actually move that much. But when it comes to side to side, uh, because the summer grains are really soft, it will actually move really easily. Uh, so it's very flexible sideways, quite firm from the top to the bottom. So the amazing thing is the timber used is 250 years old. Each year was different and each year leaves its kind of characteristic mark on the timber. And there's actually a study called dendrochronology where they study the timber and they compare it to other timbers. They create like this calendar of, of annual rings and the different widths they would have and the different kind of, um, the different way they would grow. And they can actually date a piece of timber that's been gotten out of this forest all the way back to, I think, the 7th century. Isn't that amazing? That's actually one of the techniques they use to see if a Stradivarius violin is genuine. Because if it so happens that a Stradivarius violin has timber that had grown in the late 1700s, obviously it was already dead. So uh, the timber used in Stradivarius violins would have been grown in the 1400s, 1500s and 1600s. And there was a mini ice age in Europe in the 1600s and it was extremely cold. And so the timber from that time was actually quite hard as well. But at the moment, uh, yes, so, so the timber from this forest is actually very hard and very good for violin top plates and uh, like I said I couldn't tap a tree and tell you if that's good violin wood or not. They say maybe Stradivarius did but maybe he didn't. Uh, you know there's, there's always a lot of myth around uh, what Stradivarius did and didn't do and what the old makers did and didn't do. But the one thing I do know is that the wood grown from these forests is very good for violin making and uh, and has a nice clear ring to it which is really important. I'm in the Fiemme Valley at the moment and I'm looking for timber 
for the top plate. It's some really, really beautiful spruce. Um, here I've got a piece, for example, and uh, you can hear it already makes an amazing tone um, sound. Like it's got a, it's got a really nice ring to it. So, um, but I'm going to pick some timber. Just uh, you know, I, I won't even work on this wood for the next five to ten years. I've got my beautiful spruce from the Fiamma Valley. Take a look at this. I always love listening to the tone of the spruce to see if it has a nice clear ring. So I have a like I don't know if I oh, it's hot. Yep, that's a clear ring. I just stopped it. Happily didn't make too much of a noise upstairs. Okay, so all we've gotta do is let these guys know that this is the timber I wanna buy and they're gonna send it to Australia. So exciting. So in 2018, there was a huge storm that uh, destroyed large sections of the forests. And after the storm, there was all this rotting timber on the ground and the spruce bark beetle thought it's feasting time and they, they just multiplied by the millions. And then, was a few very dry years here as well so the trees were quite stressed so it made it very easy for the bark beetles to attack other trees as well so the bark beetles are attacking this forest and they're killing numerous trees and that's actually a real race against time to uh, try and utilize some of the trees that have been attacked by the bark beetle but it is one of the problems that a monoculture will actually bring with it from around the late 1800s, early 1900s, they planted in a lot of spruce trees into these areas. And there is now a much higher concentration of spruce trees than they originally were. And, uh, you know, and monocultures can bring problems. And even though this has been done since the late 1800s, it is still a type of farming, you know, very long-term farming, but it is a type of farming. Look at that! You can see the entire section of forest has been affected by the bark beetle. Also, I wouldn't know for sure if the timber in this forest is any better than the spruce in uh, other alpine areas. I've seen some of the timber from uh, old violins that were made in Mittenwald and I have never seen a grain that is closer than, than that grain. So. It's incredibly um, hard timber as well. But like I said, apparently, you know, a lot of the Cremonese makers got their wood from here. It's incredible wood. We know that because we know that there are some really good sounding violins that were made in the area at the time. So there you go. I hope, uh, I hope I've given you a little bit of an insight into this amazing area and so you understand a little bit more where the timber for your instrument comes from. Like I said, there is very good wood that comes out of this area, but there is very good wood that comes out of other areas as well. The important thing is that it has a good clear ring to it and does what it needs to do. Anyway, I hope you got a good insight into some of the timber that's being used. And if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe and hit the little bell and keep making beautiful music. All right, see you later. Greetings from the Fiemme Valley in Italy, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I wonder how Stradivarius got here. Um, one option is that he could have caught the bus. What's a bus doing in this forest? I don't know.